Thank you for being with us this evening. It is an honour, a pleasure to have all of you here with us. And also, artist Mitch Jai In and curator, artist and writer Jenny Guy. Um, we are here on the occasion of Mitch Jai In's exhibition, Dream World, where we're sitting. Um, this exhibition opened on Wednesday, so it's very new, it's very fresh. It feels like paint is still drying on different elements. And I say that in a very real sense because we've also had the enormous privilege of Mitt being with us for the last month uh, in residence at the Birmingham School of Art on Margaret Street, Street just 10 minutes away. And um, it's been wonderful to have this activity. Lots of making actually happening both at the school and on site to complete what are several site-specific works in this very special exhibition. Uh, just to give a summary, Dream World, so this title, which sounds very um, utopian, innocuous, we, we think of um, positive things often, I think, when we think of dreams. But, you know, dreams also have an underlying I would say, dystopian element, whereby many of our dreams in life are often not realised. We're, we're constantly striving for them and the utopias that we, we all believe in individually. And I think this duality is very important also to an understanding about Mitt and his work. As you can see, it's very colourful, it's very exuberant, and it really centres on this technique and idea, conceptually, of painting, meeting sculpture. And you see this in various different forms, which he has developed over 35 years of artistic practice. Um, another important point, I feel, to underline this evening is that this is Mitt's first solo exhibition in Europe. And actually, his first solo exhibition in a public museum or gallery. Um, and this uh, does feel long overdue. Uh, Mitt has been very committed to his life and work as an artist, but for many years that took shape through collaborations and, and sometimes in making works anonymously. So for many years, people would have been seeing work, encountering bits of Mitt that they didn't quite know there or Mitt. And so this evening, with this talk, um, I think it's, well, Jenny really is the right person to be bringing out the story of Mitt, which I hope to get into this evening. Because Jenny has also worked with Mitt on several occasions and has been instrumental also in bringing some of his work um, and practice to, to Europe from where she is based in Dublin. And I'll let her talk more about those projects uh, as we go. Um, just as a brief sketch for this session, so there'll be about 40 minutes of conversation uh, between Mitt and Jenny. And then after that, we'll open up the floor to questions from you all. Um, and then after that, uh, of course, I mean, we'll, we'll be around, so if some of you feel a bit shy and want to ask questions individually of myself, I realise I haven't introduced myself, Melanie Pocock, curator at ICOP, and I'll tell you a bit later, then please feel free. Uh, but before I let them begin, I will just do a brief uh, introduction to both. Mit Jai-in was born in Chiang Mai in 1960 and raised in an indigenous Yong family in northern Thailand. His artistic training began in 1983 at Silkapur University in Bangkok and was followed by a master's at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna, where he met the Austrian artist who some of you may know, Franz West, with whom he worked for several years. Upon his return to Thailand in 1992, he co-founded the Chiang Mai Social Installation, a festival of ephemeral installation and performance art that ran until 1998. Mitt's work has been shown in museums and galleries of land around the world, including the Palais de Tokyo in Paris, the Bangkok Art and Culture Centre, the Mori Art Museum in Tokyo, and the 
18th and 21st editions of the Biennale of Sydney. Jenny Guy is a curator, artist and writer based in Dublin whose practice explores new contexts for artistic production and experimentation through collaborative inquiry. She is founder and director of Art School, an experimental framework exploring strategies for placing artists within sites of education, and editor of Curriculum, Contemporary Art Goes to School, published by Intellect Books last year. As curator in residence at Royal Red, she presented the two-person exhibition Field Recording with Mick Jain and Sven Anderson, and also the group exhibition It's Very New School. In conjunction with her independent practice, she is manager and of program and operations at Fire Station Artist Studios in Dublin. Without further ado, dear Nick, Thank you, Melanie. So, um, thank you. Thanks to everybody at ICON, and um, thanks uh, to Melanie and Lindsay and Rosie and Jonathan and the incredible team here. And, um, and really thanks to Melanie for curating this, this incredible exhibition and for inviting me to take part in, in this conversation. So it feels very special to be here in, in person uh, for this conversation. So thanks to everyone here for joining us. And, um, but most importantly, thanks to Mitt for this incredible exhibition. Um, so Mitt, you and I, we've known each other since 2005, and I feel very fortunate to have had um, the opportunity to work with you quite a few times. So sometimes have been more formal and then other times have been less formal, but it's, they've really just provided us you know, opportunities to keep up this exchange and our friendship over these many years. And um, so today I see this, uh, this conversation as, as another chapter in, in this longer term exchange. So, but what's interesting is, is that all, most of our conversations um, to date have been just between the two of us. So not in public. So, and often in, in moments of, of transition um, or while we're working together. So I just remember lots of um, kind of conversations in taxis or restaurants or in stalls and in many different locations. So from Lampoon to Bangkok, um, Paris, um, Dublin, Berlin, and now here we are in, 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 in Icon in Birmingham. So it's just really fantastic. Um, but what I'd like to do is start off in, in the current moment and uh, with this exhibition at, at ICON, uh, which is titled, as Melanie said, Dream World. And, um, and Melanie was talking about how dreams can be so many different you know, things to, to different people. So I'm curious about how, how did you arrive at the title Dream World for, for this exhibition? Wow, dream. You give a hard uh, problem because <laughs> We call it a hard problem in scientific inquiry, right? Because dream is uh, usually for the the old says so always said that we never really consciously awake, even you are in your daily life when you walk or when you talk. It's always our dream state. We never really, you know, the words for the new age awakening. We never awaken. So a dream is more collective to me. We are way in the on the anxiety, paranoia, and expectation, and mostly angst, the nightmare for the for the future. The future for us is when you are waking up, literally, get out of your bed, and you will face the next chapter of your dream, daydream. And, but Melanie make a really good uh, summarize of the, what I'm practice, I'm like a veteran hippies and, and Marxist. I love to be, whenever a little boy, I would dream of 
ยูทูบเปลี่ยนอะมอร์ฮาร์โมนิอัสคอมมูนิตี้เพราะฉะนั้นฉันเกิดขึ้นเมื่อวัยทีนฉันเกิดขึ้นกับ 5,000 คนและส่วนมากเราจัดเก็บในทางถนนและทางผู้ชายคริมินอลจูเวนไนส์ฮาวส์และทุกอย่างทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกMore larger or at large, how to live? Not, not for the our village or our tribe. And this is concern me a lot in art practice too, because uh, we train in the art school or in, even in the let's say art exhibition that I will follow from the uh, art. Reproduction. The state of the dream is there. The 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 core of the dream. Dream in action and things. And this way mostly are the fantasy and the imagination. But the good point when I arrive here, when I walk in the, or when we drive or when we go by train, that we see the whole. Plants are really. The farmer here is so rich. They have a huge farm. They never have a border. Like in Southeast Asia, we are blocked with the bush or the wood and fence or other. But the plain here is so clean and so. And I just learned from the cooker that it's five hundred. Thousand years, half a million years already. That the, the first human, not a really human, not a near Andertan, is something that they walk on this land. And when we, when I think more in my even in my dream that all the all the uh, the human that walk here, they do what they. What they call when you do when after you dream when you wake up, you start to put it in action. That that made all the Homo sapiens uh, make us to be a human, more modernized. It means yeah after the dream is always some action or some doing. And in art practice to me is always a cycle of this between dream state and to be actually. Awake, doing, but they cannot do something else except drawing or make some objects. Mm -hmm. A l o n No, <laughs> so, thank you. Right, sorry. No, and um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, I'd like to talk about um, the the neuron series, wow. and um, you have a history of working with different sculptural forms. And this began a long time ago in Vienna in yeah. the 1980s, and you were working with sculpture both in your own practice and also as an assistant to Franz West. And I remember you talking often about one of your major projects at that time from this time period, titled "Vienna Apartments: 1,000 Untitled Objects." So I always felt that this project contains many prompts. To what you've explored in your practice since, um, but can you tell us about Vienna Apartments? Wow. You get a really yeah. good document. Uh, yeah. yeah. This is 33 years old, 1987. Remember? Wow. And can we consider I, this a I sculptural? I cannot remember any mm -hmm. moments about this, but also relate to the cream. What about what we call when we are disappointed or disillusioned of this actual reality? I ca I came here like uh, the Asian, have a long hair and always thinks art is very important. I'm waiting to see a real art or something. When I'm studying in Bangkok, we just study not. Even, We are no 
download internet at the time. <laughs> I go half a day to the library to see art book because I'm so indulged in all the information about art. By bus for, in Bangkok, you, you, you go through the traffic jam for three hours and sitting in the library for one hour and the library will be closed and you take another, took another three hours to, to go back to your place. To, just to study about art and especially all the data and information about art. But when I first arrived in, 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 the, in Germany first, and it's this illusion is shocking, it, it's like a useless to me. It's just an intellectual game or conceptual games. It's not function, functioning. But good luck that I go to the art academy that they base. Most of the founders, they are a Bauhaus, you know, or the Wiener work that is similar to here. It's like a, yeah, art and design that they bring art to be functioning in our daily life. And I, and, and I concern a lot about the daily use and daily touch and daily uh, engage with the art object. It should not be just deadly on the walls and appreciate it. It should be everywhere, even on the as a carpet or as the uh, a, a table mat or something. That is the beginning, and I start to produce all these thousand of it. Just to after three years later, I I distribute so I hand free to the people. Hmm. And, um, so what is the answer then? <laughs> <laughs> what is the so question? It's, it's well, well that, that, what I'd like to do is, is, is maybe bring that period to, to now to talk about like the, the neurons um, series that we that we see now here at Icon, and um, because how has working with iron? I'm curious to how has working with iron. Um, with sculptural frames come back after all these years? You see, it, it's my nature. Every city when I go, the first place that I go is to see young friend, artists or art students in every academy. In Europe, I go every art academy when I ar arrive, just to see how and we can learn from the, the most of the, the young opposed to the old professor that they will carry us on some idea about art. But young people will struggle to find a way out of that academy or art institution at the time. But I come here too, I found very good comrade, a good friend that they help and we think that we should make something on site or site specific object for the for Melanie and for the exhibition. <laughs> so it nearly all the objects we made it here. Even one hundred dream mantra that we make by hand. A hand a hand work, hand touching. It's Spirit. That's what we love about them. Okay, thank you. And um, what I'd really like also to talk about is um, is how you came to experiment with the ripping and the tearing and the folding and the layering. And because we've often discussed how your works combine elements of painting and sculpture, and there's always this this play between the two dimensional and the three dimensional. And I remember in, in also in some of our walks, you know, around Chiang Mai, how we both realized we had this interest in textiles. And, um, but I came to realize that your experience with textiles goes, uh, is something that's very closely linked to your past. So I wonder, would you um, tell us about your experience with textiles and, and how and if it, in, in, it informs your practice? Long story. Mm. No? Mm. But first, you know, as a, I, I trained myself 
in Bangkok and in Europe as a sculptor that we have to dealing with the architecture and structures and the wall, the limitation of the white white walls in the, our in our daily living space. And I struggle hard to make something that not so static and so formal and so established, let's say. Try to make it soft and f move and and float with the life, something. <laughs> I cannot find a word. But you see it, it has to be, be used. Like uh, this uh, scroll, it should be more, the more touching, the more breaking, and the more opening, make it ruin, make it damage. I think so that is the magic of the interactions, and like all the antique, the how, how it rot and how it damage, and it will turn to be a memory, a history, or a touching. Human or animal touch is good. Anything, even the land or the sky or the so. So, so in Dreamworld, what we see a range of of works in in a final state, um, or but we see the the layered materials and the colors and textures as works. Um, but do, do you see these works as still in in process or? Um, even after, uh, even after they arrive here in, into the gallery? I tell to the, the staff here, uh, all the curators, and especially Melanie and Jonathan, that I made this for the, for the icon in the Birmingham, that room. I will leave it here, I will not take it back to Chiang Mai. It should have a life of the Let people respond to it, right? Or the canvas is good with the color in, the, in a good condition, but it can expand themselves, or you can peel it, you can break it, you can mold it to be another form of action. We, in Eastern, we said, don't do it. Or the meditation is you have to undo your your dream or your thought or your uh, vicious circle of this uh, yeah, mental or psychological uh, slavery to the self, to the ego. And so this object should be uh, the object of the dream that it should expansion and move and transform. But people here are so polite and so respect because I wish it to be moving around things, like the people can transform or the object or move it, change it. But of course, there are all law and order and regulation, so <laughs> as a modern world, and as a developing world. So I hope that I leave it here and or the, maybe next 10 years it will change completely maybe change to be something else. It don't have to be, it, I don't call it art, it's more like a, yeah, a dream action, a trace of the dream. Mm. But could you tell us about the, also the introduction of the, of the metallic elements um, that feature in some of the newer works? Because it, these, I think, have emerged in the last few years, and I'm wondering what is bringing these elements, these colors, to the surface now. Wow, the metallics, is, they call aluminum, so silver, so it's more like a, a real old element, like a gold, like a copper, or like a lead, yeah? that the old people in the Egyptian way mummify, even in China, in Thailand too. When you die, you don't know, you don't know how to preserve your mummy. They put all the hot leads or hot silver inside the, to preserve the organ and the body. 
but to me it's all the color, colorful, or even shining uh, silver is is light. Color is light, right? But how light, how you view, uh, mummify the light to be as an object, or the chemical, and all the all the uh, all the element, like uh, you get the. The first human that do the cave painting, they get the red earth to make its color. It means they materialize the medium. They, they found the medium of the light. The red is not the red, but it's the light to them. Because the, if you live in the cave, in the dark, with the daylight, and then you find some charcoal or some red earth to make to record your dream or your angst or your your anxiety about the future because maybe you are you will be starving the next week after you cannot hunt you see the one who do that is the artist who cannot go out to hunt and mostly they are loser who do this job, do a storytelling uh, over the fire camps and doing all the carving the, the bone or the stone to trade for the the food or the fruit or the meat something. <laughs> but I always I always addict to this story of my imagination how art begin. Why I will ask for my Days when I love so much all the painting and all making stuff, not a useless stuff. That's why I love it so much. I will ask myself or inquire to what is the impulse or the drive that makes it so much. Why I, I don't, I, I never identify myself as an artist until lately, nine years ago. I, people. Especially Simon soon he put me to be a painter, Brian Curtin. And with you, even with you, we practice something, not an artist, you know, how to call that. We just yeah, be a, get along with the flow of the, of the exchange. Mm -hmm. of the, yeah. Well, maybe, um, maybe oh, sorry, let's... Sorry, I, I cannot remember the question. I cannot <laughs> go... Follow the answer. Well, it's bringing me to my next question, yeah. but um, but I'd like to, to rewind um, for a moment and talk about what was um, going on in your practice in in around 2005 um, when we first met. And um, I remember the first time we met; it was in 2005. We were introduced by a mutual friend, and. Um, so to cut a long story short, I ended up staying in Lampoon and I was working as a guest curator for the Harapanchai National Museum. And this was a really important transi transition for me, after which I came back and started to focus on my own career in the arts. But So I'm thinking about, for you, that the, it was an important transitional time for you and it was after your work in the 1990s with the Chiang Mai social installation and overlapping with the time of the land and um, but could you tell us a little bit more what was going on for you at that time around that time wow it's lots of memory <laughs> but i cannot i'm getting old cannot, but i remember this place eh? yeah at this place it's like a, i i open i rent <laughs> A cheap townhouse turned it to be studio, and my which is this I prepare for for the Pratya Pintong. He asked me, but even a lot that I made for him now still not fruitful. He tried to do the proposal for the exhibition or art fair, but did, never realized. My intention is that at the time because I there's. There are one of my friends, he supports me monthly, that I don't have to do anything. Even don't have to do art or do a painting conventionally. But I, I, I opened the studio just to service all the, my friend. 
especially young emerging artists, they would order me to do some, like a hundred, two hundred painting. I even end up with two thousand painting that you can see there on the wall. I make two thousand painting that two sides would mean four thousand pieces for them to do a show, to do to uh, commercial with it, what they call it, to dealing with it in whatever <coughs> sense in art. And so, but I, at the time I, I feel secure. Bef in the 90s, I even always feel secure that soon art will change, but now it's still not changed much, right? Especially in London, that I will see next week. Uh, we want to change and always want to make it more function. I think every artist's dream is to not just to be decorated or to be keep it on the on the what they call the on the altar or something. Like an old, yeah. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, but wow, I'd like to talk, yeah, about field recording. Um, so this is an exhibition that I curated with um, with you and Sven Anderson in 2018 at the Rural Red Art Centre just outside of Dublin, and I had a very strong instinct to to bring you and Sven together in this exhibition. And because field recording, it's, it's about expansive experiences and, um, and about things that extend beyond uh, what is possible to sense and to understand or to record. And uh, so there was something very expansive and infinite and, and cosmic um, that came across in, in both your works uh, and in Sven's works. But if you could tell us about your, your works for field recording. Well, wow, this is quite exciting. We, we met in Berlin and uh, Jenny worked with Sven Anderson, a young uh, artist who, who mostly doing with technology. And he always invented, he studied, he's a kind of PhD on technology and art or architecture or something. He's, I, I just heard about him three, four years ago that he do doing in Cornell's about a very sophisticated top subject. And I am so excited that when I know all the young artists that they come from scientific or technology or something else that they never <laughs> doing the same old school like me that put the color on the, on the canvas. And we end up like a, mostly we talk online, right? Jenny invite us to do a duo show together at, in, in Rural Red. And when I talk to him, it's like a, a kind of new age, a kind of opening to the a real utopia. Because to me, it's art is more a kind of animistic and occult, occult, occult practice. Ne? And he also do, can you tell the story of Sven that he do the recording? It's like a shaman doing with technology, with the video, it looks stunning. And then he just put a small, four small screen on mm -hmm. the wall, mm -hmm. facing around uh, like a spirit, like a, he, something, eh? yeah. to me. So I, I see that we, yeah. we can see Mitt's work here, but... Um as you entered the space, you, you entered into to whether or not it was the back or the front of, of, of Mitt's work. You, you, this is, you could see, uh, you'd walked in and then you were kind of pushed around. And then on the sides Similar of the walls, the standard, right? there was um, the works by Sven Anderson. And uh, it was called, uh, When I Walk Home, I Cut Through. And it's um, from a text from Jean-Francois Argoyard. And um, he'd, He'd um, shot uh, footage from the, the kind of surrounding, kind of very urban environment, just outside the, that gallery, and um, and then kind of made a, a cut up on on um, kind of very small screens that um, that were on the parameters 
of of um, of of, uh, of of the walls. But what always struck me is that they both works. They seem to be kind of exceeding the parameters. Um, like your pieces were in like these monumental unfurling um, works, as were Sven's. They were really you know hard to contain. Um, but I was also interested about like what was it like to be paired with another artist, with Sven, um, with your works positioned in this intensive dialogue and, and maybe it's interesting because of the, the exhibition that's on downstairs here. It's just, um, uh, yeah, how is it, to, what was it like to be, yeah. because there was lots of conversations about actually the install and, and then the other day we were talking about like field recording part two, how, how would, um, because your work's kind of cut through the space and then Sven's was on the, the parameter. I, I, this is the first solo show, right? In the past, I would do duo, what do you call it? Two person show. And I would volunteer, want to be a background to the swim. But suddenly, it eat up the whole. <laughs> like at this time, it should be a kind of background, but I don't know how it happened. It's good luck that it's solo, right? <laughs> if I have to work with all uh, a group show, it will be. So, thank you. <laughs> you bring, it's a long his, uh, memory, but it just passed two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, what I'd like also to talk about is, is education, because I know that um, we both have um, a mutual interest in kind of questioning okay. systems around education, and I know that you've just completed a, a residency here at the Birmingham School of Arts, and um, so I guess where do you feel where do you stand with art education now, um, and can you relate it to your time when you were studying at Silpacorn or Vienna? To me, art is over the education. Uh, to myself, I have been learning, and mostly I learn from the young. <laughs> like uh, uh, yesterday. Last night we have a meeting with what they call that seminar. Last night with the, the young. midnight school. No, the, no. Mm -hmm. Last night we do with Lindsay the program with all the young art students. Wow, it so opens up to me the new spirit. And people here they really exchange. You know? And it's the Icon Youth to Project, me, IYP. Arts, uh, the education and, and politics, we call politics. And mostly last night we, we spent the whole time talking about politics with young artists. They are students, art students or young artists. Uh, yeah, like, like now. Yeah. It's uh, the, the good program of the exhibition is the education. Mm -hmm. It's it, a uh, responsibility to the to the media and to the public at large. Yeah. And, but since I've known you, um, I, I've witnessed how you encourage um, like a certain autonomy in, in others around you and, uh, and with other artists. And I remember in 2006 at the Palais de Tokyo event, yeah. um, it's called Lost in Paradise. Yes, yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. yeah, active. Mm. Even in Sydney, uh, I, I, I go there like a three months, we prepare like three months and I spend one month on this room and have many volunteer young artists, even the, they are volunteer, 20, 30, every day they change and we help to, to make this thing happen there. <laughs> you see to me, uh, I have, in, when I'm young, I, I really uh, doubt and skeptic about to be an artist in the studio and have uh, that French hat, sit down and make uh, nice with the northern light and with the uh, easel painting or something, I really hate it. And, but now I, it's like a karma. I have to do that at the end, I think, because I start to love for the quiet and solitude. I think the studio should, should actually be with people and not a collaborate, but yeah, let people do. And I just felicitate with 
water or coffee and make things happen. But now, uh, who knows? <laughs> Sorry, that all, no, all, all my practices mm-hmm. always aim to be like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because even though your work manifests through abstraction, um, it often kind of encourages provocations, you know, or transformations. And I, I remember at that event there was. Um, uh, there was one of the curators, um, we were working with younger artists involved with the land and we were presenting it and there was this wish to, to take off y- your shoes and, um, and there was a little uh, resistance to that and, but without any kind of, um, kind of fuss or do a- anger it, he, 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 he went down into the basement of the Palais de Tokyo and he made this beautiful painting um, at saying, please take off your shoes in, in, in Thai and in French and in English. Um, so then, at, you know, as the, the event began, you know, everyone just took off their shoes and there was a big pile of disorganized shoes, you know, <laughs> at the, um, and it, it, it worked. But, so, but there was no conflicts, but the, there was just a, a, like a minor transformation of the potential of the situation. And, um, but I just, I'm just curious about your experience of, of, of that in, in, in your role supporting this. Um, yeah, I just see how you encourage others to, to, to speak out and, and to question. Maybe it's the Southeast Asian, right? In Singapore and Malaysia, we also. It's like a, we we call we we set the party not just for the sake of the fun or meeting people, but there are some ceremony or some uh, as a village do some spiritual or some spirit or some something. You see in art when I when in the nineties we do a lot in Chiang Mai. It's art event but it never end up as an as an art which there are mood of communal uh, ceremonies and become like you go to the temple. <laughs> We have fun, we drunk, but something's so different. But I, I wish uh, soon the whole art ex- exhibition just not to dress up nicely and have wine and make a lot of noisy <laughs> shutting each other, but it should be more, I hope, I wish, spiritually. <laughs> And so, so ma- many of the, the, the themes and, um, that we've touched on in this conversation are expanded in, in, in a book also called Dream World that Melanie and Icon are, are producing to accompany this exhibition. Um, so this book and, and um, this exhibition provides what's very much a rare opportunity to have so much of your work and your practice and your legacy brought to the surface so clearly and um, I'm very excited to see it when it arrives in in a few weeks time and um, but again I'm wondering how all of this the exhibition and the book and the process of of um, of bringing so much to the to the surface um, how does that feel to you you know, you both know that I always feel shy or hiding myself from the mid chai in something. But this is uh, paradoxical, karmic things. <laughs> I, will, I want to be anonymous, that don't want to be low profile, let's say. But so it get out more and more now, mid chai in is around, especially the hashtag mid chai in, only one that I can look up in the, at the uh, modern uh, update device. No? And thanks to Merani that she make it happen that I never collect all my old, SP, some I asked from my friend or from, from my family past like when I was a novice. But Melanie took like two years no? calling my friend or mail, mailing my friend and she got all the photograph for the or the event that we saw in the past in Wien. 
and and we get a really yeah I feel maybe excited to to see uh, to read it. and the cover is good it's not mid J in much so I don't dream so, so wow I, I hope I, next time we should talk in person in the street or in the coffee shop I hope I not disappointed you Thank you so much for that conversation. I feel like I've learned so much, actually. And already, I know a lot. <laughs> so, um, but it is time for questions, so anybody who has a question, please feel free. Beautiful. Um, I, I don't think I'll need it. <laughs> um, it's a two-part question, and the second part partly depends on how you answer the first part. You, some of the work was made here during your time here? Yeah. Most of the work? Uh, most of the, the uh, I make a background, let's say, and I make an act, active one, the actant and the, the, what they call the role, the moving one here. So the piece behind you, was that? This is a back, as a background. No, I made it uh, from my studio in Chiang Mai. Okay. But this is this is not the work. You see the whole structure, like a 150 years, this strange beam, uh, the pulling beam from the, for the roof is the thing that I would like to engage with. Mm. If you see, if you walk and the window, the two window, the curator told me that there will be a daylight window up here, just see the plan and then I made this as a part of the building. I, I got the impression from the slides and from what you said that a lot of the work when you do an exhibition is made for the show at the, at the location. Yeah. So that's not strictly speaking true then. So my second part of the question sort of doesn't apply but does a bit in that I was wondering, you mentioned Geological and memory and the build up of, of layers, and, and uh, you use the word um, damage, and, and things get damaged and, and show their history. And I was wondering when you made something on site in a very short period of time, whether you felt there was the time for those kind of concerns to be manifest in the piece as they would be for a piece that would be evolving in your studio. Does that make sense? I'm here, really work like a three week in the in the in the residency art school. But it took it 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 like a year to me, even because I love to work at night. And to me, the limitation of the timings, but that why it make me more concentrated and have really. Yeah, contemplate time. So it, but it worked out. It can be a headache for the curator that is on the deadline, the last minute of the deadline. <laughs> but it worked out so well. And I think to do things on site or site specific, uh, so called, is the a refreshment for the visually a, a moving what they call this you a uh, flux and flows in the This is uh, a consequence of art is always a dream as an object and as an 
action or reaction, let's say. So it's not a it's not a kind of inspiration or expiration. It's a necessity. If like that, I I will get mad or me myself or or the artist. You, we we have a, a suicidal complex. We we kill ourselves or cut our ear like a Van Gogh or something. You see, it's a kind of so necessary, so important to me, just to do something. And the whole series of work or the whole from the start, it's always the same. It's always you you can call. I always do the dream work. Uh, Erin Griesen used to call the small, uh, that series is a dream work because I told her, is that she choose sleep with it and literally she bring it to on her bed and she sleep and she said seven days she dream about the, like a strain, have a strain dream, dream and she call it a dream work. And Melanie put this practice of or colorful, or, or cut things, or the double size things, a dream, a dream world. Okay. <laughs> <That's good. Thank laughs> Do you have a part two? Well, okay, so I suppose I'm thinking about what you spoke about earlier, about how we're all walking around all the time in a dream, right? Sort of dream-like state. So then I, then I start to think about the emotions as I come into producing the work. I see happiness, I see beautiful beauty, I don't see. I think you can use the word dystopian, I don't think you see that. So then I wonder about what it would look like if there were some really powerfully bad emotions, some negative emotions, what that kind of work would look like to you, or is it there and you just don't see it? So we double sized it it not cheerfully or happily colorful the work. Some things on the on another side of the coin this one can imagine. <laughs> a nightmare, not a dream. Really I I, uh, I don't know how to explain, but it's good. Jonathan, you should come up and <laughs> Just say hi. <laughs> See the the works that we ask people to expand. It. Usually, it's, uh, it it can be it's expand to the to to cover the whole world because I I give a lot of uh, the structure and the uh, vertical support and uh, the, uh, the horizontal support and the vertical ribbon to make it expand. As, as the witch, as the one who installed it. And uh, Dr. Khan is uh, she's an architect that she composed this. She put a knot to it and she put the S, S. It's a, yeah, it's more democratic, let's say. <laughs> it can transform to what, to be whatever the, the, the one who installed it, the one who weaved it. You should answer. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is actually taken along 
with the lady over here. So I wonder, um, do you ever have a dream, like it's all in black and white, or can you imagine your work without color? There are no, there, there are no black and white, you know, the light, uh, except the really extremely darkness in black hole, when the light cannot get in. Actually, we, in you know the light, it's always light, even black is the light. A complete, uh, there are millions of layers of black things. So, but, but I, I to me, uh, this is too complicated and too philosophical to talk about, to use black or to, 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 to paint in, in black. <laughs> also psychologically. Any other questions that people would like to ask? Otherwise, uh, we can always chat more later. Um, we'll be around, of course, but uh, thank you all for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure, very insightful, and uh, also if you'd like to have a gallery exhibition, you've got some time. Um, and also the publication mentioned, you can order it on uh, Icon's shop website, and I think when you pass out the building, there's also a QR code that you can spare to do so. Um, but otherwise, have a great evening, and thanks again for joining us, um, and thank you for being here and being